Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Adam, and today we're gonna to talk about why your engine fan might be staying on. Um, it seems to be a common problem. A lot of people are asking about it. So I'm just gonna do a video here today on how to, some easy ways to troubleshoot and diagnose what might be going on with your engine fan and why it's staying on. Before we get started, I'd just like to take a second to ask you if you wouldn't mind to hit that subscribe button. I've been looking at my analytics and it looks like only about 20% of you are subscribed so 80% of the people that are watching my videos are not subscribed so if you could do that that would mean the world to me and I'd really appreciate it so let's take a look at this truck the truck we're going to be looking at today is this 2012 Freightliner with a 12.7 liter series 60 in it uh, it's a pretty basic gauge package. I don't have a lot of uh, electronic driver feedback to tell you a lot of different codes and what's going on like some of the newer trucks. So we're gonna kind of take a look at this the old fashioned way and, and see if we can figure it out. Now this truck, the clutch is functioning properly. So everything works, but I'm still gonna be able to show you what to look for and how to go through this, where to start. Now, all trucks are gonna be very, very similar. There's gonna be some minor differences. One difference might be you have a manual switch where you can turn the fan on manually and then turn it back to automatic this truck doesn't have that so that might be a minor difference a point of failure if you have one you know take a look at that and see if that could be a point of failure and two it'd be nice to know there's there's two different default positions for your fan clutch default on and default off this truck is default on most of your trucks are going to be default on but there's trucks that are default off and what that means is the default position is what the truck will go to when there's a problem and a parameter is not being met. For instance, you lose air pressure. It takes air pressure to uh, operate the fan clutch. So if you lose your air pressure, it's going to go to the default position, which in this truck would be on. So, and then in, uh, if you lose uh, power to the solenoid, it's going to go to its default position, which in this truck would be on. So we need to see what parameters are being met and not being met. Uh, in order to di diagnose this thing. So it'd be helpful to know what your default position is, but just know that this truck is default on and that's how it's uh, going to operate. Uh, in regards to that switch, I'm gonna have a video coming soon, hopefully, of we're going to install a fan switch in this truck so that I can turn it on and off, or on and automatic manually uh, in case I wanna do something like that. Uh, so let's get started here. Now we're gonna do all these tests with air pressure fully built in the truck and the key on key on but engine off so how this works is when the truck wants the fan to turn on and off it does this through the solenoid here it has power to the solenoid which then sends a signal to the solenoid to either supply air or uh, eliminate air when you supply air to the fan clutch it disengages the fan turns it off when you cut off the air to it it will engage the fan fan will turn on um, so with this one, we're going to check some things here, and because all the parameters are met, this fan should be off, which means we should have air supplied to it. So we'll check that out here with the solenoid in a second. So there's kind of two sides to this in diagnosing this. There's an electronic or electrical side and a mechanical side. So the first thing we want to do is there's there's some common problems with these so we're going to start there one would be your fan clutch is stuck you have an air leak uh, a bad solenoid or we'll get into it a little bit later in the video your air conditioning those are three main causes of what causes this to happen there are other causes but we're going to start there so the first thing is key on air pressure built we want to know if we have an air leak if you have an air leak inside that clutch You'll hear like a, a hollow sound of air whooshing against metal. And it'll be right up in here. So stick your head in there and listen for an air leak. Okay? If you don't hear one, then you, you know, you, you're fine. You don't have an air leak. So being that this fan is functioning properly, the truck off, the key is on, I can spin these blades by hand. See that? If your clutch is locked up, you won't be able to turn that by hand, it'll just be stuck. So that tells me, you know, we have good air from the solenoid to that fan, which is disengaging it. 
Now, something this is this is very unlikely that this is your problem, but it did happen to me. Uh, somebody suggested it to me, otherwise I probably never would have looked for it. When I first bought this truck, the engine fan was stuck on. And I was about to, to give up and replace the fan clutch, thought it was seized up. But what happened was this truck was sitting in a gravel lot for several months, who knows how long, before I bought it. And all that dust built up inside the fan clutch and kind of locked it, locked it engaged. So I took a hammer and lightly, and I do mean very lightly, just tapped here on the back of that clutch. And I heard it disengage, it just went clunk. So my fan clutch was just stuck in place doing the, uh, due to dirt. And, and I do emphasize tap lightly. That is most likely not your problem. So, so far we've determined we do not have an air leak inside the fan clutch. What'll happen is if you have an air leak in there, it can't build the pressure it needs to disengage the clutch. Okay, it is not stuck due to a bunch of crud in there. So the next thing we want to do is move on to the solenoid. Now, in the Freightliner, most of your solenoids are going to be right here. They're going to look like this. All right. If you have like a Kenworth or different kind of truck, refer back, go back through my videos. One of my earlier ones, I have a video on how we replaced a, a fan clutch solenoid on a Kenworth T660. It's up in the firewall, much more difficult to get at. But if you can't find it, take and you have this airline, find the airline that goes to your fan clutch and just follow it back right up in here and it'll go right to the solenoid. All right, so for the solenoid here, we have an electrical line coming in. We have uh, a supply airline here and then the airline that goes to the, the uh, engine fan. So. There's three different things we want to check here. We want to check that we have air supplied to the solenoid from the truck. So what we would do is just pop this line off this off here. Air supplied to the solenoid. So that part's functional. The truck to the solenoid is operating properly. Now, what we want to find out is, is the, is the solenoid opening or closing, whatever your position is, and letting air to the fan. Yes. Okay. So we now got air coming in and air going out, and you probably couldn't hear it, but when we when we take air away from the fan, you can hear the, the, the clutch go thunk, thunk, where it's engaging and disengaging. And the way you could test that is if you pull this air line off and you put a little bit of shop air to it, you can make that clutch engage and disengage just with a little shop air. Uh, put this back together, I do have a little leak here, but I'll fix that in a minute. So let's move on to the next thing. Once again, here's the solenoid. Here's the electrical wire. If you follow this right here, there's a little plug. Unplug that, and on the supply side of it coming from the truck, get your multimeter out and probe that. You want to see, uh, check for a, a voltage reference in there, uh, upwards of 12 and a half volts, and then you'll and wiggle the wires around. You could have a, a wire that's jumping voltage here, and you know messing with the signal, turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. So. That could be a problem too. Check your wiring for the solenoid. So with these wires here, if you don't have the correct voltage, you're gonna to wanna to trace the wires a little bit. See if you have a, a broken wire or a bad ground even. Like I said, wiggle them around and check to see if you have any fuses for this in your fuse box and potentially have a blown fuse. Now that we've gone through all this and tested the solenoid, and we know the fan clutch is capable of working. If that's not the case, if you've tested this and your fan clutch is still locked to the engine and won't turn, that's a sign that your fan clutch is seized up. Uh, there's a problem in there and it's, and it's stuck. So you potentially need a, a new fan clutch. So now that we've proved that the fan clutch is capable of working on the mechanical side, because when we took air away and resupplied it, the clutch would engage and disengage, um, 
The next thing, most likely thing, well, we've, we've shown the clutch is good and the solenoid is working properly. So the next most likely thing could be air conditioning. So the first thing is you could have a bad high pressure switch for your air conditioning. It's actually quite common, or you could possibly actually have high pressure that will make the fan stay on. To fully diagnose this, we put a set of gauges on here, and I'm gonna do a video soon about uh, testing that with your, with your air conditioning gauges. But for now, we're just talking about the fan side of it. It's common for these high pressure switches to go bad. So before I, if it was my truck, before I went and took it to a shop and spent $1,000 to diagnose why this fan isn't staying on, I would probably throw a high pressure switch at it. They're about $50, give or take. And if it wasn't a common problem, I'd be hesitant to do that, but it is actually a common thing. So you gotta find your switches, which if you just follow your AC lines, to every truck, they're gonna be a little different place. Here, for this truck, you gotta, this is the receiver dryer. You got a switch here and a switch here. So you got your high and, pressure, high and low pressure sensors on the receiver dryer. Now on a Kenworth, they'll likely be up here more in the firewall or up by your expansion valve tucked in behind here on your firewall. They could be different places, but just follow your, your AC lines and you'll find them somewhere. So on, the, on some of the newer trucks, like I said, this truck has not got a lot of fancy electronics on it. Uh, so it won't throw me codes as to what may be going on here. If you have a newer truck and it has your fancy display, throws you all kinds of codes, it may be giving you an air conditioning code where your pressure might be high causing this. Uh, if the sensor wasn't the, 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 the switch wasn't the problem, you could have high pressure in your AC system. Some of the causes of that could be uh, an overcharge on the Freon, or R134. Uh, an obstruction in the line, which could be uh, a pinched off or collapsed line. Uh, your expansion valve could be sticking or clogged. If you ever had a, a compressor explode on you, you could have put some parts or pieces into the line potentially, and they could be getting caught in the expansion valve or somewhere else. It's, it's a, just a possibility. Or sometimes, uh, you know, those expansion valves will stick and cause a high pressure situation. But that's something we'll diagnose with the gauges later. Or at this point, you may choose to take it in and have it put on a computer and see exactly what the problem is. So I hope some of these basic things helped you a little bit diagnose your, your engine fan on situation. And stay tuned in the future here. We'll have some videos coming hopefully soon on installing that manual switch and doing some AC readings with the manifold gauges. And we'll have some videos in general just on air conditioning, uh, troubleshooting it and maintenance, stuff like that. So stay tuned, hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.